Hi, it's Gil. This is Brooklyn Gardens. Today we're going to update a video that we did a couple years ago on container gardening, especially putting your conifers in containers. So it works for a lot of different plants, shrubs and trees, and but um, there's different aspects of it, and we're going to go through those today. So let's get started. So I'm working today with this uh, tub, and it comes in, they come in several different sizes. They're used for mixing mortar, but you can use them like this to keep your area cleaner. Um, if you're working on your patio or different things like that, any you know place you want to keep it cl as clean as possible, you can put down a tarp as well. But this contains all your media. You can you know you can get it back up again and um, and put it back into the pot, so it doesn't get mixed with a lot of other other materials, other soils and that. So, so just something else I wanted to put out there that makes it easier when you're doing this type of work. An important thing about container gardening is that you have good drainage in your in your pot so that the water isn't just sitting at the bottom and that and then your roots sit in that water and they're just going to drown and rot. So um, you can put screen, da screen material down there. Today we're going to use some free draining rock, some lava rock, which um, the roots really like because they'll attach themselves to the rock and it's, um, this is a little bit bigger. I'll get this out of the, the bag here and um, show you what I've got. So this is lava rock that's about that size there about one inch half inch to one inch and and that so that'll we'll put that through the bottom and there's three holes in the bottom of this you could put again screening there but we're going to uh, um, just fill up the bottom of that and let the free let it drain freely and it's good to always elevate your pots a little bit too so um, that way the water can flow out and it's not just trapped down there so 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 we've got a little bit of that. Also, a lot of times we put pumice or perlite in the bottom end. So I've got both pumice and perlite here and I do mix it in with my mix. Straight bark works as a potting mix, but um, this adds, pumice has some a little bit of mineral content, but they also aid drainage. So um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the, the pumice in here in the bottom. This has some fines in it, so I'm not going to use too much. We don't want the fines, if it's not graded out properly, the fines will clog your holes up too. So um, this comes as a bulk material. So, so that's the first step. This is a tree we're going to use for the pot right here. It's a uh, slow growing Canadian hemlock. First step we'll get this out of the container and evaluate its roots and see what we have and then we'll get some uh, media in, into the uh, container here. So first we'll just brush the top off. That's a, that's a nice little root to it. So we might dig down there just a little bit. Let me get my, uh, my hook. Take some of this edge down a little bit too. We're also gonna, so when the trees grow in a circular pot, the roots wanna do the same thing. So we'll just um, rough up these roots just a little bit. So, so I'm trimming these top roots off. There's some little fine roots up here that aren't necessary and they kind of, they're not, aesthetically they're not, you don't, they're not pleasing and they're not necessary. We have developed a nice root system. So um, this one, I'm gonna, I would con consider it for a bonsai, right? Yeah. So next step is to get some um, bark media into this here. So I'm gonna grab a, pot of that right over here. So this has a little bit of uh, perlite already in it, mixed in. As I mentioned, it's not absolutely necessary and I know actually professional growers that grow, you know, trees for a living that um, just use straight bark. So uh, my friend Jason down at Western Evergreen does that. So, and he's very successful at what he does. So, so we're gonna get a little bit of uh, media in there. Now, why do some people use bark versus just 
Well, it, it just works. It's, um, uh, you know, you, you can add other materials like the pumice and the perlite, um, and they have benefits, but it's not, it's another cost factor too. So, especially when you run a nursery, you look at every cost factor as well. And if you have your results or uh, really good just using the bark and we usually let it sit for um, a number of months to let it cool down a little bit because it'll take nitrogen away from your your tree as well so um, so it it's not like if you use straight bark I you know I'm perfectly I, I, I do it um, at different times but I'm gonna check the level on that probably a little low on that you think Max yeah, yeah. yep you want to see that trunk and get it up a little bit higher. Just give it a little pressure, a little bit of pack. It'll settle some more, but it's not, it shouldn't be too awful noticeable. And then this here. What do you think about that height? It's perfect. Okay. So the next step, um, we're just going to start putting some media in here. And I'm not going to do it all at one time because I'm going to pack it. Now you can use your fingers, you can use a tool. I've got another tool over here that I can use, but I just want to get some of that air out. Make sure you get as much air out of there as we can. You know, you want your roots in contact with the media as much as possible. So, um, so that way it gives full contact. Just cut a couple of roots off of here just to make it it's kind of where the tree slopes down a little bit. I like to keep and just a little bit of fine pruning right there. That one can come off. There's a couple over here. Just clean at it. This can be done later too. So, but as long as we're right here, just a few cuts and it cleans it up a little bit as well. So, so we're just about there. And then you want your soil, media level, just about where we'll kind of show what it does, but we don't want to, we actually want to show that trunk and finish that off. And, you know, as another added step, you could put some, th something like lava rock or a small granite or decorative type rock on top of this here um, that would it would help in for a little bit in, in suppressing some of the weeds and, and that but because uh, uh, you're you, you know you have to come back but you won't have as much problem with uh, with weeds in your pots but they, they will grow there so so that's our first pot Next tree we've got is not a conifer, but it's one of my favorite trees, Stuardia pseudo camellia, with that camellia like flower. It's a fairly young one, probably about five years old. And um, it has some native soil here, but we're going to surround it with uh, um, bark, bark media. And I'm going to lift it out for a second and show that I've got it in a grow bag and the roots are growing out. This bag will need to come off at some time, at some point. But, um, so we're gonna put it down our, um, I use perlite in this one and the red lava rock or the lava rock down at the bottom for drainage. This one's gonna go in like that. So when this tree comes out next time, that grow bag should come off. It'll be a repot kind of a situation. The roots are gonna grow through the grow bag and they're gonna be pretty tight in here. I'm gonna take something like just an old, I use this um, old knife here, serrated knife, and cut the roots around so that um, it, it'll lift out easier. And this pot here has that, it's coming back a little bit so it's harder to get out of the pot. So you'll have to trim as you go. We're just gonna use pumice or perlite. Um, it'll be perfect, so so we're just gonna start working it down down there. And the roots will grow into it, be nice and fibrous. I'm gonna use, this is gonna be my tool right now to get some of this air out of here. And just pack that down in there, you can use your hand. Most of your root, growing your is going to be inside that grow bag but it will send fibrous roots out into this um, 
perlite as well. Clean that up, wash it off a little bit. Sometimes, got a root up here, just like the first one we did, that root isn't necessary. It's a little fibrous root up high. And you'll find those and usually on the trees, these little roots and just trim them off and clean it up. And your main roots are down below and then they become more fibrous. So, so that's pretty much it for that one. And we'll move on to the next one and talk about it. We're getting a juniper ready here. Um, and we're gonna put it into a tall slender pot. This is a juniper, I think it's horizontalis. Um, but anyway, the cultivar name is Pancake. Really like the color. Um, it'll grow literally just a few inches off the ground. Makes a great ground cover. But we're gonna put it in a pot today. I just uh, um, kind of really like this this juniper. So I'm taking a little bit of this. It was growing in, in the soil. So I'm taking a little bit of that soil off and um, also it'll fit in the pot and just to reduce it a little bit and there we go so okay so there's there's our tree I think make a nice cascade uh, trim a little bit of that remember when you trim the roots um, the roots become more fibrous they'll split and divide and become more healthy so we have a nice root mass right in here um, this could be cleaned up a little bit but I'm not going to touch that too much today so let's uh, we'll get started here in just a second okay so we're we've got this pot pretty much ready to go I put some uh, lava rock at the bottom I put a little bit of perlite on top of that and it has some um, this one has perlite. So our next step is we've got the tree. It's reduced. We've got it pretty full right here. It's going to make a nice one. So we're just going to start adding our bark mixture here. So again, we're we're pressing down, packing, packing us so that the air is out there. It's still a loose media that the roots have no trouble uh, growing in and they're in contact with it and on some of these this had a fairly small root system and it's not loose but I can pull up just a little bit and if you have a really if you ever notice and if you ever seen bonsai people repotting they'll have trees that are just roots nothing nothing else they've washed all the soil up and they have to fill all those gaps and they'll use uh, things like ch chopsticks to um, poke down in there and they do it very carefully um, to get that media in contact with the uh, with the roots. Actually, what do you think? It's nice and clean. It's a nice juniper. I'm gonna put it right over here, and we'll move on to our next one. This tree is called Diggy. It is uh, an eastern white pine. Very slow growing, upright. Has a bit of a blue tinge to this needles. Really a nice tree, slow growing, and uh, fairly slender, um, but not columnar. And it would be, a, um, it's been uh, pretty popular lately here at the nursery. So let's get started. It has a lot of nice roots on it, and but a lot of them are going to go away. So we're just going to go ahead and be brutal and cut those roots off put that over there this tree would be comfortable just to grow in circles here and get all root bound if you don't do these like and the other thing to remember in your container gardening is that you can't leave them in the pots for really long periods of time and you don't want to use an exceptionally large pot for a small tree you can get by with it and it actually can work but usually you want to just go with slightly oversized from the original um, root mass so you want to come but you want to give it some room to to grow but you don't want it to have be just a, a huge area of it so this is that's what we ended up with 
this is the last tree we're going to do today and then we're going to get a shot of all the trees in a row plus a couple others that you can look at so as I had mentioned, we've left a little bit of room here. There's about an inch, at least an inch, all the way around. The roots are, um, I've roughed them up and trimmed them a little bit. So I might mention that we use this bark media and why we use it. it you know, if you're planting annuals in your pots, perfectly fine to use what you want to use as a potting mix that's mostly peat based but in it would be hold way too much water for um, your conifers and shrubs and maples and anything you want to put that's more tree like or shrub like so don't use um, peat moss you could have a small amount mixed with bark but um, it's not something you'd want to put. It's, it's different than your annuals, which require a lot of water. And then once it, once it dries out, it's hard to get it wet again. So it's a different different situation. So watering's key for containers. They need more water in the summertime. If they're outside, usually you don't need to water them at all unless they're under an eave. But, uh, you know, keep an eye on the watering. Um, this bark meat, it does, will hold on to enough water to support the tree for long periods of time. Sometimes cold weather can dry out, freezing weather can dry out the trees too. So you need to keep, it'll actually suck some of the water out. So, um, so once that freezing weather is passed, you want to uh, go ahead and check your trees and see if they need any water. But I'm going to add a little bit more here. I'm going to... So I'm going to um, just go ahead and get this, this finished off and then we're going to come back and just have the trees lined up and we'll uh, do a final shot. So we've lined up the pots that we did today, plus a few more that I had around so you could get a good look at them. We've topped them off with some different um, toppings like sawdust and the uh, lava rock, the red lava rock, um, perlite on this one. I've got some decorative gravel right here. I've run out of that, but um, it's a polished small gravel, but there's so many things available. So just going down the line, we've got diggy, the eastern white pine, uh, Stuardia, pseudo camellia, a golden mugo, Karstens, the Canadian hemlock, Kotobuki, the Japan, really nice upright dwarf Japanese black pine, mini twist, the eastern white pine, Pinus strobus, the pancake juniper, one of my favorite mugos, Jacobson, develops that really heavy branching. I love that plant. It's in a, a wood wood box too that I just made. So very economical. Uh, another Jacobson in a regular pot. Uh, Mother load juniper, another flat growing one that is nice bright gold in the winter time or sorry summertime. And a nice little hinoki in a um, I think that's a training pot. Yeah, and then a Colorado blue spruce. And when it gets this new growth, it'll be even more blue than this. This one's pretty outstanding. Um, just a low growing one. And pricing on these are mostly in that 80 to 120 range, $80 to $120. Um, there's things like this, even though this pot's falling apart, um, they always sell for 30, 40, 50 dollars. But that's kind of the price range if you get something in a pot that um, there's a cost of a pot but these are things that you can do on your own go to your pottery dealers and um, pick up a pot and use the techniques that I've shown today to pot up your trees thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoy the video and uh, I hope that you've learned a few things about uh, potting techniques and potting soils and uh, anyway that I'm standing next to a gold mugo pine uh, Max actually has his eye on this one so bright gold in the winter time it'll be green in the summertime but it really adds a lot that's the thing about conifers they're so interesting winter interests that um, you just get um, a lot of vibrant color going on in the winter time with uh, your, a lot of your conifers and, and then with the golds and the blues so one interesting fact as we close is that did you know that most of the blue trees 
they're not really blue. It's a waxy substance on the, that's on the branches or on the needles. And that wax um, will eventually come off and the tree will be green on the inside. So it's not, the needle isn't blue all the way through. It just happens to be a waxy substance. That's true with a lot of plants, hostas and other plants as well. So until next time, thanks and we'll see you later.